Welcome to this uh, uh, webinar session promoted by Eden and uh, the NAP, uh, the network of academics and professionals that I represent uh, here today. And welcome so to uh, this webinar on critical thinking and technology. Let me first of all introduce uh, myself. Uh, I am uh, Antonella Foch. I think uh, you know me, most of you know me. I am from Roma 3 University where I teach experimental pedagogy and my research interests are based, focused on, um, especially on the use of technology uh, in education and in higher education in particular. Um, today we are going to uh, talk about critical thinking and the possibility to use the enhancement of critical thinking with uh, technology. Uh, we are going to, um, to have uh, um, the most uh, interactive uh, uh, webinar uh, we can because it's important um, I think to have a discussion on these sort of issues that are really uh, central uh, in the scientific uh, uh, debate, scientific community debate. Um, so uh, first uh, thing I would like to do with you today is to warm up uh, this meeting we have some questions. I would like to know from you, uh, from those of you who are attending uh, this webinar where I, I can't see your faces, but I know you, you are there. Uh, what is your opinion? What do you think uh, critical thinking uh, skills are? And uh, what is your opinion regarding the possibility they, they need actually to enhance um, critical thinking skills within those that are called 21st century skills? Can you tell me something? What is your, your view before starting, before, I mean, before entering uh, the issue in detail? I know you can type on the chat and I also know that if you raise your hand in that little box on the top of your of your uh, videos of your screen uh, you can um, ask for for speaking so Alistair Welcome Alistair, Alistair Krillman is with us and is typing source criticism is the most important skill in all education today. Thank you Alistair, especially in this post-truth society. In fact, this is absolutely true. We are uh, experiencing a very difficult time because we have lots, lots of information available thanks to technology and this is the link we can uh, already uh, state um, one of the links we, we can already state but if we don't use our our critical thinking skills if we, we are not able to um, uh, distinguish which are uh, the information that are reliable and on which we can elaborate our thought uh, and the ones instead that are not we can't uh, be truly active uh, citizens. We can't make um, decisions and participate in, in, in the active society. Um, another definition, critical thinking is thinking. If thinking is not critical, it is not thinking. This is again another interesting point. Uh, you're right, uh, thinking should be critical and we'll see uh, in the presentation I'm going to give to you today 
that this is an important point because we need to nourish to feed uh, our thinking information competence is vital likewise ict competence to navigate and use tools to handle large amount of data of course this is true again uh, because we um, we need to develop different skills and actually the one you are mentioning is one uh, of uh, is part of the skills the european commission recommend as uh, mandatory in uh, this um, time we are uh, living and so technological ict skills uh, should be managed by everyone Other otherwise you can't access and you know make up your opinion on on things that are happening um, uh, of course yes yes uh, but uh, being outside your comfort uh, so your comfort zone as well of course um, okay there's some discussion going there on the chat uh, and I'm very glad about that so I'm um, I'll go on with uh, uh, what I wanted to say which is actually linked uh, to uh, what uh, came out of this first warming up session um, critical thinking skills are uh, essential so you know we can state that we can state that critical thinking skills uh, are drivers for creativity and innovation um, we said we already said that there are social and cultural reasons that make um, I think uh, of uh, critical thinking skills as drivers of creativity and innovation society needs uh, this Western, of course, Western uh, and industrialized uh, society we live in, uh, in order to grow and to develop, need um, creativity and innovation, needs um, change, uh, needs the development of new possibilities uh, for, especially for for young young people and uh, just if you have the possibility of practice and of exercise of exercising your your critical thinking skills you can um, reach uh, the enhancement also of uh, creativity and uh, innovation uh, without um, innovation uh, we don't have uh, uh, improvement in any uh, in any um, area in any uh, sector of uh, our uh, lives in in any uh, area we are uh, based uh, there are some data here uh, which I wanted you to to reflect upon uh, because um, which in a certain sense justify the re justify um, why the European Union I'm talking about the European Union but there are lots of documents that there are lots of um, scientific articles uh, dealing with uh, uh, this issue and dealing with uh, the need to be active, do something uh, in order to uh, face the difficult situation we are living. We thought that the crisis was over. Maybe uh, in some in some areas it is but it, it is not actually if we have a look at this data that i'm showing you here so on over a, a seven year period from 2007 to 2013 you can see that the proportion of young people need the so-called needs neither in education employment or training within the uh, 28 countries uh, composing the European Union increased uh, significantly. Um, so 
compared to 2013, we have a 4.8 uh, points uh, higher proportion uh, uh, than in 2007. And another uh, important issue that I'm stating here and which is uh, really impressive is that from 2007 to 2013, employed school early leavers decreased and unemployed early leavers increased. So um, we have uh, a mandatory issue here. We need to reflect on this data as educators first of all we need to understand what to do in order to uh, face the situation and uh, invert such such trends um, already in 2010 this report uh, from OECD investing in human and social capital was stating that we needed and we need actually the um, complex uh, communication. We have a, a strong demand for non-routine analytical skills, problem solving, inquiry-based learning, all oh, different ways of approaching uh, education that could help uh, the development of certain skills which are so demanded in uh, present society. So we, we are living a very um, peculiar uh, and particular time where uh, there's a strong demand for education in a very wide uh, sense and there are so many, so many young people living formal education. So if we uh, need if we want to reflect on these issues what do you think do you think that in such a situation i tried to describe there's the possibility uh, for teaching certain skills and do you have any experience on on that can you tell us something about your 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 um experience i really hope that i can voice some of you i don't know if uh, i'm not uh, able to do that but maybe the secretariat if you raise your hand can help you speaking otherwise you can of course chat your chat. There are people typing. So I don't want to... Hello. Hello yeah? everyone. I'm Francesca Grusti. Yeah. Ah, Francesca uh, Grusti from our department yes. from the Laboratory for Experimental Research is speaking. Yeah. Glad of it. Please, Francesco, the word to you. As you know for sure, and we are uh, really involved in the, the critical thinking problem. You know, when you have to to speak about you have to speak about educational curricula. Uh, critical thinking is like the chaser cat because uh, it, it is uh, hinted in all the disciplines, but sometimes uh, it not appears as fully formed in no one of these disciplines. As soon as you you push to to see it focus. Uh, in focus, uh, it slips away. But I think that critical thinking can be encouraged in many different ways. And critical thinking uh, uh, is an important issue in education. And uh, our experience is that using uh, questioning techniques, uh, the content becomes more relevant for uh, every child or student uh, in the classroom. And our experience uh, is about pushing creativity into uh, critical thinking uh, learning environment uh, and we had this experience uh, in Sicily and we had the students writing uh, a, a narrative story uh, in group 
in an online environment. And we had this uh, very, very particular experience. And uh, I feel confident to say that it was really, really encouraging to use critical thinking uh, into uh, formal curricula, educational curricula. And uh, I strongly believe that uh, it needs to be integrated in uh, every level, at every level of classroom from uh, key to uh, and uh, to university academies and whatever. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. I am seeing Alistair uh, who uh, typed his comment and actually uh, I would like to know from you, Alistair, because Alistair is typing um the, about the, the need to to integrate in every class uh, these uh, uh, activities um, related to critical thinking development and uh, he um, was suggesting to get the students uh, involved in choosing course uh, materials and this is a very interesting point alistair can you can you um argument more uh, on that do you have uh, any experience uh, regarding this uh, possibility to involve to involve students in in choosing their their materials the studying materials i think it's a very very interesting uh, issue to involve students yeah yeah are you there yeah i think i think uh, you can hear me now so yeah I, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I can hello hear you everyone very i well. think uh, it's yeah. um, I think it's a we've tried it. It's not a, it's not easy to get them to do that. I think they they have to they have to learn. They have to be given sort of templates and uh, rubrics to be able to choose. They need to practice quite a lot in assessing the credibility of the sources they find. But I think we we're not really doing them a favor by choosing everything for them. And the more they're mm -hmm. involved yeah. in, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, all of you know, I mean, we, we're all working with OER and uh, with um, with uh, student-generated uh, material, that um, the more they're involved in producing course material, the more they have to check sources, the more they have to be involved in that. Um, I did read an article, and I can't remember where it was, but there was one article about uh, some uh, teach, teachers who were, who gave them they gave them <clears throat> texts that were full of false information. Yeah. And their job was find the faults, identify what was wrong. Uh, there were false um, quotations. There were false references. There were uh, factual fails, failure, factual sort of mistakes. And uh, they were they had the task of actually tracking it all down. So they really had to dig into the, the literature and look around and find other facts. And they had to basically, it was like marking a student paper that was full of uh, mistakes. Um, it's one way of doing it. See what other people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a very very interesting uh, uh, experience. And actually, I you will see uh, we'll be discussing this in in short uh, time. Uh, this idea of assessing credibility of the sources is uh, one of the points that I consider most important uh, because if you involve the students in choosing the sources but you make them understand uh, that they have to uh, um, think critically about the sources they are choosing according of course to certain uh, indicators um, they really manage to acquire um, a very very important skill for their lifetime the one according to which whatever they read should be um, analyzed and evaluated and put uh, under uh, discussion. So this is something that they really need uh, to learn. So this sort of practice would be absolutely um, useful, uh, absolutely useful. Um, if I go on trying to, to focus on what we, we are discussing uh, today, 
um, I need to uh, make a, a link, a connection uh, to uh, the labor market. Uh, because, uh, as I was saying, yes, we have uh, uh, a strong need of, of certain uh, 21st century uh, skills, um, and we are in such a, a huge need uh, for uh, education because of the crisis, of the economic crisis, of unemployment, of what we were saying. Uh, a, meeting, a minute ago, but we are also in a paradoxical uh, situation because we have this large demand of education, uh, but uh, educational uh, institution, institutions are facing all over uh, Europe, I, I would say all over the world, mm, a big problem that is the one of seeing their resources reduced. So uh, they need also to look for resources in order to be able to offer what uh, people are mm, asking actually. And uh, um, there are some countries where uh, this kind of uh, mm, trend uh, as is being reduced uh, and there are countries where uh, there are policies um, addressed to improve uh, equity in learning opportunities. Um, I'm referring to Belgium, France and Germany. Uh, and if you have a look uh, at this article by um, this colleague uh, Cinque, uh, dated uh, a very recent article is uh, issued this year. Uh, you can have a look on very specific data regarding um, investment and the policies related to uh, this uh, this kind of skills um, development. Um, I will give you uh, some some references, of course, in the end, if you are interested. There are different links where you can find open resources on these uh, uh, issues. Um, what I um, really would like to suggest is to have a look also to this uh, paper by Lorillard. I think you all know uh, this uh, scholar. Uh, was been uh, working a lot on uh, technology and the use of technology in higher education. Uh, she always and she frequently speaks of learning organizations, um, places uh, where uh, the organization itself should learn in a virtuous cycle from uh, uh, its um, possibilities from its quality indicators in order to improve its offer uh, and in order to meet what the demand in education is. So this is another point we should really uh, think uh, about uh, because sometimes uh, we don't think that bottom-up uh, activities and evaluation system evaluation activities could be helpful for uh, the whole system and could give a very important benefit to the ones who are um, demanding education, demanding innovation in education. So this is another point I would like to, to discuss with you. The other point is that uh, we are asked to enter also uh, the working places. If uh, um, it's uh, the, the, the labor market asking for certain skill developments, for certain knowledge uh, development, for specific knowledge development, we should um, make this interaction more effective. So formal education should enter the working places and the other way around. We should involve um, stakeholders uh, more in our uh, curriculum de development and should ask what they think 
are um, the, the skills and the way we should enhance certain skills uh, within our um, learning environment. So the, that virtues uh, cycle that I was mentioning before should be developed together with all the subjects, all the actors uh, that are involved in, in this process. This is uh, um, a view we should think upon. So according to the inputs I tried to, to, to suggest in this uh, second uh, block of uh, slides, can you um, again give me your point of view? Do you think, do you believe that uh, every organization, every institution in which we are involved could, be, could become a truly learning organization and what do you think of the role again that uh, technology in education um, could uh, uh, play in this uh, um, in, in this activity in this uh, uh, change uh, that we could uh, see really see in the, the way uh, institutions uh, could um, could be the role they could have some impressions from you and of course if you have idea of uh, um, initiatives projects regarding critical thinking development critical thinking development in uh, I would say dual world in a world where, where the working, the labor market is involved in higher education, teaching and learning. I'm referring to higher education in particular because it's uh, uh, the level of instruction where actually uh, these sort of skills um, should be uh, developed uh, most, even if, of course, uh, also at primary uh, level uh, it would be important to have this kind of uh, um, enhancement uh, and development. Alistair is typing. Students writing Wikipedia articles, excellent way of real life uh, practice. Ah, this is again uh, an interesting point because there they can be active um, subjects uh, producing the resources we were talking about um, a minute ago. And this uh, is another way to enhance other skills such the, like the, the, the writing uh, skills which are very effective uh, skills closely linked to critical thinking skills that that's for sure and that's also Maria Rosaria Re from Roma 3 University typing and Di Diana typing too waiting to see uh, yes we are doing some activities as international virtual mobilities we, ah that's very interesting I wish you could uh, Mm, tell us more about the virtual mobility. Actually, we have also. Um, oh, thank you, Alistair. Uh, Alistair uh, typed uh, the, the, the link where we can see the uh, Wikipedia education program. Wow, that's very, very interesting. I think I'll use it with my students. Uh, so, yes, Diana, that's what, very interesting the virtual mobility programs. Uh, we have a, pro, a European project, we are um, participating in a European project dealing with dual um, learning and virtual uh, mobility in particular. And uh, we actually we are uh, in the planning uh, phase for, for the piloting um, that we are going to have uh, in, um, in the spring 
and I hope we will have the possibility to have a webinar on virtual mobility. That would be very, very interesting. And, and as I see from, from the chat, uh, different uh, people are working on the same theme. So it would be interesting to have uh, a new webinar on virtual mobility and discuss Mm, the mm, experiences uh, together. Um, I have here another um, another comment. Mm. So different experiences in this kind of exchanges uh, of virtual exchanges, Romania and USA. That's very very interesting. Uh, yes, if you have links or or um, to links to produce, uh, we would be very much interested in seeing other other links. Very very glad about that. I hope that um, we can also store uh, this uh, chat so that also for people who are not able to attend. Uh, this webinar um, uh, today uh, can later on access the information and the links. Um, okay, Diana, they work virtually in teams to produce multimedia artifacts. We run this in um, every year since 2008. This year we focus on augmented reality projects. Great. It would be uh, um, uh, again, also Don, Don Alcott is commenting and saying we would be very interested in learning more about the U.S.-Romania project. I live in Krakowia and uh, teach in the U.S. So, yes, um, I think that we should support this, um, this idea of having another webinar on virtual mobility, which is uh, really, I think, a new... Uh, team that uh, we need and we 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 wish it could be uh, practiced and uh, evaluated uh, um, more. Um, another another link is coming uh, because um, we need to use technology in a critical way uh, and uh, so using technology uh, for mobility saving um, all the difficulties uh, that traveling uh, implies uh, is uh, really um, a successful way of using um, technology. So if I go on, um, um, great, Alistair. We have a webinar on virtual mobility back in September. See the recording. Great. So we can have uh, a look at that as well. Very, very interesting and useful for all the projects that are going on among us. Uh, going on on what we were saying, um, I'm going now to tell you about a research, a research project we have been uh, developing in our group in Roma 3 University uh, and at the Department of Education uh, in particular. We have been studying critical thinking abilities uh, for some years now uh, and we have been trying to uh, study critical thinking abilities linked to the development of specific uh, uh, models, specific teaching and learning models. Uh, what we think is that uh, mm, there are some, some issues, some categories, some, some structures that uh, need to be um, proposed, uh, need to be uh, designed uh, carefully in order to be successful both in uh, teaching, uh, both in getting good uh, teaching and learning results, um, but also in critical thinking uh, development. 
um, we were mentioning this issue at the beginning of our of our meeting. Um, we need to think. If we think, um, we need to think. Um, I would say properly, but that is a, a wrong word. Um, if we want to uh, develop our thinking, we need to feed our thinking. And what Paul and Elder state here, uh, I think is uh, important because they uh, reflect on the quality of thinking. Excellence of thoughts must be systematically and culturally nourished, fed. Uh, so what we need in order to uh, have a high quality of thinking is culture that's why we have uh, the reason why i think we have all these post-truth uh, problems uh, on the net is the lack of uh, strong cultural uh, basis so that's why we need to have this uh, um, cultural issue uh, really um, uh, present in our uh, curriculum development and in the educational proposals that we offer. Here you have uh, um, here you have uh, a summary of what we have been trying to do in our teaching and learning projects uh, uh, for some years uh, uh, now. Uh, we try to focus on the teaching materials we provide online and we try to give uh, these teaching and learning materials uh, a, a, a strong cultural uh, basis. Uh, we organize guided discussions on dedicated uh, virtual spaces where students work. We try to analyze what they produce online their uh, elaboration online regarding the teaching and learning materials we offer. We have been uh, analyzing these materials and we will see um, how through content analysis models but also through lexical metric tools. Uh, we have been basing these analysis on an adapted uh, um, um, critical thinking skills uh, um, analysis model based on Newman, Webb and Cochrane model. We have been um, making the students working on uh, short uh, essay test productions. We have been trying to uh, repeat this test, uh, of course, at the beginning and in the end of uh, uh, the teaching and learning activity in order to see if what they did could be uh, measured. Uh, here you have uh, a synthesis uh, diagram of what I was telling you about. So pre and post tests based on essay writing, uh, short essay writing. Online, the activity uh, online was based on cooperative writing and then uh, evaluation of uh, the activity. Mm, their production, students' production, was analyzed through content analysis, as I was saying, and lexical metric analysis. Then we had also other kind of analysis we carried out uh, through online interviews and um, questionnaires. Uh, but also the questionnaires, and that's what I will be uh, talking to you in a minute, where structured according to this uh, critical thinking skill, um, skills model. The model is uh, really uh, summarized, synthesized here, uh, is made of 20 pairs of indicators and the assessment model is based, as you can see in this uh, formula, on the presence or absence and the ratio is, is based on the presence or absence of the uh, um, indicators in the written production made by the students. 
the um, indicators are as you can see here 20, there are 20 pairs of indicators uh, we uh, tried to focus on the ones we considered most important to identify critical thinking levels relevance importance width of understanding justification novelty and uh, so on um, in the data i'm going to present to you today uh, we are um, focusing on what uh, students from this course, uh, the course of uh, uh, primary education school teachers uh, um, course, uh, where more than 200 students uh, participated. Uh, I'm going to present you data regarding what they thought about uh, the course they attended and in particular about what they thought regarding the open resources we put at their uh, disposal during, during the course. In fact, they had this online lecturing uh, as part of the uh, compulsory module in educational research methodology. Uh, and after taking part in the course, they had to carry out this evaluation uh, section. Mm, and uh, mm, they had to fill in, actually, this evaluation form. Uh, and this is linked to what we were uh, talking about before regarding uh, the need to reflect and to evaluate uh, the resources they uh, students have at their disposal. Either they, they produce them or they get them from uh, the teacher, the lecturer, the person who is in charge of their, um, of their uh, teaching and learning. Uh, that's why we developed this uh, tool, which we consider innovative. And you, mi you might say, why do you consider innovative this uh, evaluation tool? First of all, because it is based on the critical thinking model I was telling you about. It's divided in four sessions, um, each one related to some indicators uh, Mm, present in the model I was telling you about. Relevance and importance contains indicators linked to the former characteristics of course content. The second section regarding breadth of understanding, argumentation and justification, where we have a series of statements and students should indicate how far they agree with them. Critical evaluation, third section, where students are asked to critically assess content, proposing issues for discussion and reflection. The novelty session is an, is an open-ended session. Um, and here, the aim is to enable students to reflect and express their own opinion, evaluation, adding elements on already identified indicators. I'm not going to show you, uh, you know, all the results regarding the all four sessions. Um, I'm just giving you some, some uh, results regarding the first three sections that were the more uh, quantitative uh, um, sections uh, where students had to, to make their uh, statement just, uh, um, you know, indicating one or the other position uh, in, in, in the scale. Uh, here you can see that uh, they gave uh, positive uh, replies to what we were asking to reflect upon regarding comprehension, memorization, clarity of content and structure, clarity of language, and so on and so forth. You can read, of course, the indicators. What I want you to, 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 to think about is the organization of the questions that were directly linked to uh, the uh, areas relevance and importance here 
width of comprehension, augmentation, justification, solutions uh, um, here regarding, of course, con the content of uh, the teaching and learning materials they had uh, for their course. Critical evaluation. So in this session, we were asking the students to express their idea um, on, on the course content to see if they agree or disagree regarding the possibility of, of enhancing uh, their creativity, innovation, communication, critical thinking, problem solving, memorization, and so on and so forth, skills. So they had to stop and reflect on what they learned, on what they had available for their study, and on the activities also they had to carry on, um, to carry out uh, uh, online, and to see if actually that uh, activity was helpful regarding this kind of skill. Um, of course, this model is still under investigation. Uh, of course, we were focusing on uh, the relation between their ability, the student's ability of reasoning, and a specific um, teaching and learning model we were offering them. So it's difficult to make generalizations. Um, we were basing our, our study on again, a specific hypothesis that linked a strong um, culturally based proposal. Students in that specific section were studying Rousseau, so were studying a classical text. And again, you know, it's very, very specific. Um, we um, uh, focus on technology uh, as uh, um, a facilitator. We were thinking of technology as a facilitator of a certain specific model of uh, uh, instruction. So again, it can be a limitation. Um, and so uh, you, it's difficult to say that even if we had a positive uh, reaction, this reaction can be uh, considered positive and generalized. Mm, what we, we are doing actually is uh, um, trying to, um, to promote a critical use of uh, uh, technology. What we are doing is to um, replicate the use of such a model uh, in a diachronic way on different um, years, so in a longitudinal kind of study, in order to see if what we uh, got from those analyses can be um, replicated and considered actually positive because data, you know, are stable uh, in time. So this was our experience. This is our research. This is the research we are trying to carry out and to promote. And again, because we have just 10 minutes left in this uh, webinar of ours today, before wishing you uh, a good uh, season uh, break, uh, I wish we can have some more um, reactions from you. So I wish I could uh, uh, get your impressions on the experience I presented you and also to clarify some points if we have the time to, otherwise you know where you can find me. Uh, and if you have similar, similar, similar experience uh, to discuss, to present, um, and if you also can give us some suggestions on how to uh, improve our 
research and our results. Please express yourself. Any suggestion? Don is typing. So I know that this, uh, and if you raise your hand, maybe you can also speak. Also, I have a type. I'm sorry. We need to give. Um, we need people to 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 write. So we need some time. But I'm glad that we have already some good uh, suggestions for next uh, next webinars. This idea on the virtual mobility um, development, uh, I think it's very, very interesting. And uh, it, as you can see, is uh, um, already on in different uh, projects, in different projects that we uh, as, a, as a community have, are developing in different settings. So this is very important. I can see what Don and uh, and uh, mm, Diana were typing. I don't know if uh, the experience I presented was sufficiently clear. Anyway, I will give you some um, some references where you can find articles. We actually we. Um, published uh, different articles on the experience we had and uh, uh, part of these results I presented today were actually uh, presented at the Oxford, uh, uh, the Oxford um, uh, conference, uh, the Eden Research Conference uh, uh, held in Oxford and the, the, the article um, was published on and is published actually on uh, Eurodel, so you can get and uh, access to it, I think, easily. Uh, another, um, another article uh, related. Uh, um, related on uh, what uh, we were uh, talking about uh, today is um, available on um, academia uh, so on the platform where you have open resources so if you access that you can you can download it i made it open so you can get it i don't see any questions or comments. So, um, yes, Alistair is saying that uh, the uh, webinar uh, he, he mentioned before can be can be downloaded. So again, that is uh, mm, mm, that is again an interesting uh, source we can we can get. And uh, we have five minutes to go, but I can also these five minutes because I can see any questions or. Uh, Um, comments. I can um, maybe clarify something regarding uh, the lecturing uh, the students had to uh, attend online. As I was telling you, um, we had we have these very large uh, uh, we have large classes in our courses, more than two hundred students, 
and um, these students have to uh, study uh, for uh, their qualification um, as uh, primary school teachers. Uh, during this course, uh, of course, they, they, they need to learn about uh, educational uh, research methodology, uh, their structures, uh, and uh, um, issues related to methodology for research. But uh, they also have to uh, attend uh, um, part of this uh, lecturing on um, some of the tests uh, uh, taken by uh, Rousseau uh, work uh, on Rousseau work, and uh, in uh, Rousseau uh, work, uh, they have to um, to read original uh, original part of uh, his um, text, uh, the text we we identified. Uh, was uh, Emil, um, and on this text uh, they had to reflect on, they had to uh, make written comments on the, um, the passages we gave them for, for reflection. Uh, Emil ou de l'éducation. Uh, there uh, we, um, of course, collected their texts. Mm. But not only, actually, they had to reflect on uh, different inputs we gave them on the web, on the uh, platform where they had to uh, work. According to the Lectio Magistralis model, according to the tutorial model, what is uh, uh, still on in certain very high quality universities like Oxford and Cambridge, where very small classes are held, where students have to read original passages from very classical um, authors, and they are addressed uh, to, uh, to reflect, to, to, to write, to uh, produce their own, their own um, critical um, comments. Uh, so that's why I was saying that they had to work and to comment with our evaluation tool on a very structured um, proposal. Uh, very um, on a proposal that in time, in a long time, proved to be successful. And that's why I was telling you maybe this uh, tool that we developed uh, was too focused on a very specific uh, teaching and learning proposal. Maybe on different kind of resources that uh, tool uh, could not prove to be so uh, successful and uh, effective. This was the last thing I wanted to uh, to tell you. Um, I don't know if the secretariat can tell me uh, something regarding the the the, the close of um, our meeting today. We reached uh, 4.30, so um, the time that we were um, entitled to, to use. I hope it was uh, uh, helpful. At least it was the, the, the occasion to reflect on our uh, topic today. I leave you with my uh, email address so that if you want to make comments, uh, if you want to ask questions, if you want more uh, materials on what I presented today, you can get it very easily. Um, and I leave you also my uh, Twitter address so that you can also contact me there and also you can attend our hidden 
uh, chance. Thank you. Thank you for being there. And have a nice uh, season break. Bye-bye.